Hi and welcome to C programming for Arduino a step by step guide This course is designed to teach you how to use C programming language to control Atmel family microcontrollers This is a programming course and that is where the emphasis will be We will have some small hardware projects to exercise your code but the real purpose of projects is to test your understanding of C not the hardware This course is designed keeping in mind that the audience knows absolutely nothing about C programming in general. We assume that you have no knowledge of electronics. Some hardware concepts are used in this course for better understanding of the code, but you don't need to worry as you will be taught what you need to know to make things function properly. Before starting the course, it would be better to introduce you guys to the topics which this course will cover we will start by introduction which will introduce you to the software and hardware requirement of the course in this section we will also load and run a sample code in order to verify the software and hardware next we have chapter named c for arduino which will introduce you to the basics of hardware programming like its building blocks and steps of programming the third chapter is very interesting and it discusses about data types chapter 4 teaches you about the decision making in c next we will discuss about program loops in c chapter 6 introduces functions in c chapter 7 is about storage classes and scope in chapter 8 you will be introduced to the pointers chapter 9 teaches you some techniques so that you can use the pointers effectively chapter 10 discusses structures unions and data storage the c preprocessor and bitwise operation will be discussed in chapter 11 in chapter 12 we will look into some useful arduino libraries atmel produces a wide variety of microcontrollers you can select any microcontroller from the given table but you should know why you are selecting a particular microcontroller selection of a board depends on what you want to do with it if you want to blink an led then the cheapest one will do just fine but if you are setting up an experiment that must sample several dozen sensors in one second then you will probably want to use a microcontroller that has a lot of digital input and output pins So first you will see number of pins required. Then you need to examine the software architecture by considering how light or heavy is the processing requirement of your code. Whether you need an 80 megahertz processor or 8 megahertz processor, you must estimate the required clock speed. The program you develop in a compiler is written on your PC. When you upload the program on microcontroller board, it is stored in the card's flash memory. This memory is non-volatile which means that even if you disconnect the board from its power source the contents of flash memory remains intact so you must know the flash memory which will limit your program another factor you must consider is sram or static random access memory it is the memory in which program variables are stored during the program execution this data is volatile which means that data is usually lost when power is removed from the board Next factor you need to keep in mind while selecting microcontroller is electrically erasable programmable read only memory or eprom It is a memory which is used to store configuration or other types of information that are needed when the system power ups Physical size of microcontroller is also important depending on your application You must know that larger available memory and more input output pins dictates a larger footprint for the card so keeping in view our requirement for this course we have selected arduino uno this board uses 8 mega 3 to 8 p microcontroller which has 32 kilobytes of flash memory 2 kilobytes sram 1 kilobyte eprom 16 megahertz clock speed 14 digital and 6 analog pins its operating voltage is 5 volts To benefit from this course you need to test your code on some hardware you will be needing this hardware at many stages of this course 
I would suggest that you buy the hardware before starting this course. So you need Arduino Uno board, a solderless breadboard, some LEDs, some resistors and some jumper wires. A microcontroller without software is a bicycle without handlebars. Like any other computer, a microcontroller needs a program of instructions to do something useful. Arduino has provided all the software tools as free download from their website which you use for writing your program code. This section demonstrates downloading, installation and testing of software you need. So follow the instructions in the given video. Start the browser. Enter the address and press enter. Go to download the Arduino IDE. It gives you different options for installation according to your operating system. You can download Windows installer for Windows XP. You can download Windows zip file for non-admin installation or you can download and install Windows app for Windows 8.1 or Windows 10. There are also installation options for Mac operating system and Linux operating system. As I am using Windows, I will click on Windows zip file option. On the next page, it will give you two options, whether you want to contribute for this download or you want a free download. If you want to contribute, then click on contribute and download. If you want it free, then click on just download option. So I will click on just download and the download will start. The zip file is downloaded. Now expect the zip file to a directory of your own choice. Open the extracted folder. And run the application file. Within a few seconds, you should see the IDE for the Arduino. If you see the IDE, you can fairly be certain that the software downloading and installation was performed successfully. Now that you have the software installed and verified, you can check to see whether the microcontroller board is functioning properly. This section demonstrates the hardware verification using an example code which we will upload in the microcontroller and observe it working. Start with plugging your board into laptop using the USB cable. This is the end which will be plugged into the board and this is the end which will be plugged into the PC. Now connect this end of the cable with the board and connect this end of the cable with the USB slot or PC. The minute you connect the USB cable to your computer, power is applied to the microcontroller board and an LED will light up on the board. The USB connection is providing power for the board. The power provided by the PC via USB cable is not much. Therefore, most microcontroller boards are provided with a power plug so that supply with greater power can be connected to the board. Selecting the microcontroller board in the IDE. The Arduino IDE support a variety of different microcontroller boards. Therefore, you must tell the IDE which board you will be using for writing your program code. For this purpose, open the IDE and go to the tools. In the drop down menu of tools, click on boards. It will show you different available boards of Arduino. 
as we are using Arduino Uno, we will select the Arduino Uno board. Board selection. The IDE does a pretty good job of automatically figuring out which USB port you have selected to power and communicate with the microcontroller board. To determine which port is being used, connect the Arduino to the PC, go to the tools, go to port in a drop down menu and see which port is selected. In my case, COM4 port is selected. What we need to do now is load and run program code to see that everything is working properly. Although we could write a short program from scratch but we cannot do that yet because we simply do not have enough information under our belt at this junction to make much of a learning experience from the process. Rather, writing our own program, we will load and run a simple program that is included as a part of Arduino IDE and it blinks an LED. For this purpose, go to File, go to Examples, then click on Basic, finally click on Blink. This is the source code. We are going to ignore the actual program code for now because our real interest at this moment is simply to see whether the program can be run. The window with a white background in which code is written is called source code window. It has a white tab with the name of code which is blink in our case. The source code window is used to enter and edit the code you want the program to execute. The program code is presented in a more or less readable format that looks a little bit like normal English narrative. The computers don't understand English. Computer only understand two things, on or off, hence the term binary computers. These two states are represented by zero for an off state and one for an on state. Simply stated, by combining these ones and zeros together in a specific sequence, we can make the computer do what we wish. Back in the early days of PC programming, some computers actually had switches that were flipped on or off. And when the sequence formed, a computer instruction you wanted to perform, you pressed a button and that sequence of ones and zeros was deposited into the computer memory. Hours later, you might have a program that said hi on the computer screen. Programming then was a very laborious and error prone process. Luckily, now we have a program called a compiler, which translates the English like C language program instructions into the proper ones and zeros sequence for us. The Arduino IDE has a compiler built into it that does the translation work for us. Now we will compile this program using the leftmost button on the toolbar. When we press the compile button, the IDE examines the code for errors and if there is no error, it will compile the program. Now click on the compile button. You can see in the bottom black window that the compiling is in process. When the compiling is complete, you will see this message telling you that compiling is done. After the compiling is done, this message will be displayed which shows the memory used by this program. It means that the compiled Blink LED program used up to 928 bytes of memory to generate the necessary sequence of ones and zeros to accomplish the task the program is designed to do. Here maximum memory is 32,256 bytes because the IDE is set for Arduino Uno. Arduino Uno uses 8 mega 328p microcontroller which has a flash memory of 32,256 bytes. It would be different for different microcontrollers. As we have compiled our program successfully, but the program is still sitting in your PC's memory, not the microcontroller memory. Therefore, 
you need to click on upload button in order to move the compiled program instructions from your PC's memory to the flash memory of your microcontroller board. When you upload the program, it will start moving to the microcontroller board and you will see two LEDs flash on and off as the upload proceeds. These two LEDs flash on and off on your board. This simply indicates the communication process that transpires over the serial communication between your PC and microcontroller board via USB cable. The instant program uploading in the microcontroller is complete. An LED will start blinking on regular intervals as instructed in the program which is uploaded. Now we will repeat the whole procedure for another example to make the concept clear. The program instructions in this example perform a task of fading the LED light at regular intervals. This program does not use built-in LED, but it gives an output at pin 9. So for this purpose, we need to connect an external LED with pin 9. Use the given circuit diagram in which we have an LED, which has its positive terminal connected in series with the 330 ohm resistor. Other end of the resistor is connected to the pin 9 of the Arduino board. The negative terminal of LED is connected to the ground. So for this purpose, go to File, Examples, click on Basic and then click on Fade. The program code is loaded, now compile it. Program is compiled now, as you can see, done compiling here. And it has used 1150 bytes out of 32,256 bytes, which is the total flash memory of Arduino Uno. As the program is compiled successfully, click on Upload to transfer the instructions from PC memory to board memory. As transfer of instructions proceed, you can see the LED lights on board blink. The program is done loading. As soon as the uploading is completed, the LED fades after a regular interval according to the instructions written in the program. You have successfully installed the IDE software and connected your microcontroller board to the PC. In addition, you have also loaded, compiled and uploading your first program. Thanks for watching this video. We will continue this course on the next video. Till then, take care and goodbye.